Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. These webinars are part of the Implant Practice Production Program, which is offered to you by Toman Medical and Levin Group. We have a large and growing group of specialists who are receiving our monthly newsletter called the Implant Practice Success Report, as well as other videos and practice support material that is distributed by Toman every month. Everyone at Toman Medical and Levin Group are very committed to your practice success, and we hope that you find all this information helpful. And a special welcome to those of you who are joining or viewing this series for the first time. It's great to have you with us. And for those of you who have been before to webinars that we've produced, thanks for taking the time to join us again. I think you'll all find this topic very timely and highly useful. The topic today is how to close more implant cases using the implant treatment coordinator. Uh, our presenter is Dr. Roger Levin. But before we begin, just the two quick housekeeping items that I always throw out there. One, we are recording the webinar and you will receive a link to that recording by email in the near future. And just a reminder, please feel free to submit any questions that you have into, the, for those of you who are here live, um, into the GoToWebinar control panel. We'll leave time at the end to attempt to answer the questions that are posted there. Um, we'll first address topic questions that pertain to today's topic, but if you have other practice management or implant related questions, throw those in there and, and Dr. Levin will do his best to answer them or someone from Toman Medical will help us as well. So I'd like to introduce uh, both Christina Donahue and Scott Root with Toman Medical. Uh, they're with us this evening. Scott is the president of Toman Medical USA, and he will introduce our speaker, Dr. Roger Levin. So, Scott, take it away. Great. Thanks a lot, Steve. As a company totally focused on implant dentistry, we at Toman Medical are thankful for our collaboration with Dr. Roger Levin and the Levin Group to support our customers. Dr. Levin is a leading authority on dental practice success. He and his team of practice management and marketing consultants have counseled over 30,000 dental practices and have helped them manage and grow to their potential. He has authored 65 books and over 4,000 articles on dental practice management and marketing. As Steve mentioned, as part of our implant practice performance program, the topic tonight titled How to Close More Implant Cases Using the Implant Coordinator Consult is based on Dr. Levin's extensive experience in this area with many practices. I'm sure you will find his insights and wisdom to be interesting and very informative. And without further ado, I will turn it over to Dr. Roger Levin. Well, thank you, Scott. And uh, I always like to start with a moment of gratitude because relationships are so important. And uh, our relationship with you and Tom and Medical and Christina has just allowed us to provide education to others. and. Uh, we're really appreciative. I'm very excited to be with you all tonight because this is such a critical topic. Your success as an implant practice depends partly on your implant treatment coordinator. And if you're a practice that doesn't have one or you're thinking about getting one, keep in mind from a developmental standpoint, you can't go through the four stages of entrepreneurship as a dental practice. You won't get to stage three without an ITC, Implant Treatment Coordinator, because that means you're delegating that responsibility, giving doctors more time to focus on what they do best, even though you are still partly involved in the implant new patient process. So the, who is the ITC? Many of you watching this webinar have implant treatment coordinators. And you might think, well, I'm gonna watch this, I'll see if I pick up a pearl here or there. But let's start at the foundation. The ITC, or implant treatment coordinator, in oral surgery and perio and prosthodontics, 97% of them have no sales background. 97% no sales background. Well, what is that? Now, by the way, that's okay. They can be trained, don't worry about that. You're wondering if yours has a sales background, probably not, but let's look at what that means. The job of the implant treatment coordinator, and I'm gonna say ITC for the rest of the night for the most part, is one word, sales. They are the salesperson. And because of that, the way I explain it, they are the second most important person in the practice. 
The first is your PRC, Professional Relations Coordinator for Referral Marketing. We've had a webinar on that. and We'll have others in the future adding to that knowledge base. But once marketing creates a patient consult, sales needs to close that case. And the beauty of the ITC, and the reason I love teaching this, is it's really focused because the ITC basically has to carry out a, what we call a 60 minute, minute by minute, step by step, script by script appointment. 60 minute, minute by minute, step by step, script by script appointment. And if you follow the model, the close rate is going to be excellent with the addition of the new patient phone call that we'll talk about tonight as well. So it's very important to understand that this focus can really drive and build your implant practice. And that's what makes this so exciting. And that is why the ITC is what I call the second most important person in the practice. Now, don't feel offended for the rest of your staff. They are wonderful, they are important, they make the practice run. Uh, so in no way am I you know, comparing those other than saying, without a sale, nothing happens in a business. Tom Watson, the brilliant CEO of IBM, made that statement over and over. And once that sale is made, that's where everybody else comes into the equation. So let's get going and take a look at the ITC. Now, maybe your ITC, in fact, most likely, has no sales background. Well, now it's on us to train them. But before we train them, who is the ITC? We want a person with a positive attitude. This is a relationship-based person. Patient comes in, older, younger, one implant, full mouth, uh, dental. You know, a lot of patients who come for implants never took dentistry very seriously. And that's why they're in the condition they're in. Now, and great for them, they're ready to change their lives. I believe that dental implants are the highest quality of life enhancement as dentists that we can make. But they, when they come in, they need a positive person. They don't want somebody neutral. They don't want somebody cool in personality, cool meaning cold. They don't want somebody judgmental. That's about as bad as it gets. They want a positive attitude person because when you're positive, it's contagious. And that contagiousness creates motivation on the part of the patient. We want someone who's enthusiastic. Is, this, is your treatment coordinator someone you would enjoy having dinner with just to talk about the world or life? Is it somebody that has energy and excitement and displays enthusiasm for everything at all times? You want an ITC that comes to work truly loving to help other people. I've talked in webinars about leadership and serving. And I've made the statement that what, wouldn't it be incredible if we could get up every morning and go to work to serve others, as doctors to serve our team and our patients, as team members to serve our patients, as office managers to serve our doctors and our teams. And you know, it, it sounds like a, a utopian, you know, pie in the sky kind of concept, but the best leaders I ever meet really go to work to serve others. Well, you want your ITC coming to work to help patients decide to have implants because it will make such an incredible difference in their lives. And unlike a car, you know, when you go to look at a car at a dealership, they want to get you in that car for a test drive. And the reason is they know if you test drive that car, they've got a much better chance of selling it. Well, we can't test drive implants, at least not yet. So the test drive is the ITC, her personality, her persona, how she communicates, her scripting to the patient. You want someone organized. If she seems distracted, if she seems um, uh, not paying attention to the patient that has come in to learn about implants. If she seems disorganized, can't find this, can't find that, can't find the computer file, that's going to go completely against that patient having confidence. Organized people create confidence in other people. I teach a very simple technique that, be, you know, anytime you have a patient, 
uh, more for the general practice or, or perio where there's a lot of repeat patients, you should take a quick look at what we call the personal information record of that patient and pick up one or two uh, items it, mentally from that record about that patient, walk in the room and say, how's this, how's that? Comment on something personal and people are ecstatic that you seem to know about them. They feel like you care and they feel like you're organized and that gives them great confidence in you. You want a motivated ITC, not someone you have to motivate, as I will explain, you want someone who is motivated, self-motivated, and wants to do this job. And lastly, you want a disciplined person. And the reason is that one of the most important concepts I have learned and that we teach at Living Group is that, is that when you hire disciplined people, you don't have to manage them. Disciplined people manage themselves and they will figure it out. However, you do have to train them and you need to train the ITC as I'll make that point over and over again this evening. But you have to train them and once you train them in today's world, you've got to train them again and again and again. Make sure that your ITC spends some time with your Toman Medical Sales representative. Yes, these are salespeople, but these are highly educated, highly trained, highly skilled salespeople. They know a lot about implants. And in just having conversations with the ITC, the ITC is going to pick up new information that they can convey to patients that's going to increase your close rate. So there's one source uh, just for general concepts about dental implants for the ITC is your Toman Medical Sales representative. Okay, now if you want a great ITC, the starting point is a great personality. There are two kinds of people. The minority are, were born with a great personality and they are the minority. The rest of us had to learn uh, how to have a great personality. But being likable, the word likability is critical for the ITC. And you want someone that you have a feeling, a positive feeling about that is likable within about two minutes. One of my suggestions that I always make is to make sure your ITC reads and rereads the book by Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Still the greatest book on getting along with people ever written, and they ought to reread it at least once a year. We should all, every, it ought to be a law that we all have to read it at least once a year. We'd, we'd be a much more pleasant uh, society. So personality is essential. You get that foundation, you, we, anybody can train the rest. We have built hundreds, if not thousands of ITCs over the years, simply following a formula. But what we can't do is give them a personality. And what happens in many practices, and you have to, you have to really be objective and ask yourself the question, are you experiencing the Peter Principle? Well, what is the Peter Principle? Some of you are too young to know, but there was a book written actually when I was a kid, uh, long before I was in business, uh, called The Peter Principle. And basically what it said is we promote people and promote them and promote them in business until they reach their level of incompetence. That at some point, some people that we promote have now been moved to the next level and they're not competent to be there. Well, many practices, and I, I'm making no judgments, there's no criticism, I just try to lay out the world as I see it to help you, the dental world, many practices will take a staff member and make that staff member the ITC because she was an assistant, has, has been with you 20 years, you like her, she's loyal, we'll make her the ITC. But she might not be a good or great ITC. She might be a great assistant. Same for other positions in the practice. If your office manager is your ITC, that's a mistake because she's gonna do one of two jobs incompetently, either the ITC or she's not gonna have enough time to do her job as the office manager. So why do we give her the job? 
because she's smart, because she's talented, because she's shown capability in other areas. And maybe she could be a good ITC, maybe she won't be, but you're not giving her time to be the office manager. But we see that syndrome a lot. We take someone we think can do it, we hand it to them, but we don't compensate for the rest of their time. So make sure that you don't put someone in a position that they're not right for. I call it too smart, too knowledgeable syndrome. They're really good in one job, it doesn't mean, and it's no disrespect, there, there are so many jobs I could list off for you that I would be terrible at, awful at, um, you know, that I realized, no, I, I may be good at some things, but I'm not good at most things. Uh, so again, here's the book, Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, is very, very helpful. Okay, uh, now, the first step of the ITC process, this is a new way of thinking for many of you, is not the ITC. In fact, they won't meet the ITC at this stage. It's the first new patient phone call. And that call is critical. And it's critical because of uh, something I've identified in a body of research I'm doing, I call the invisible. And there's a whole research project I'm involved in that I literally call the invisible. And what is the invisible? The invisible are those things that you either can't measure or don't measure. Because the first rule of business, maybe the most important, is what gets measured gets done. Every day you want your ITC to turn a report into you. I'll try to remember to come back to that. It's not in my webinar tonight. But if you don't get that report, you don't know what's happening and you don't know what needs to be improved or what needs to be capitalized on. Well, one of the invisibles is the question, how many patients call your practice about dental implants but never make an appointment? Number two, how many patients make an appointment but do not show up? And then of course, how many show up for their consult on implants and do not accept treatment? That you might have a better idea on, although many of you don't. But let's start with that first question of the invisible, how many patients call your office and never make the appointment? And the answer is you don't know. Again, keep in mind when I say these things, I'm not, I don't criticize or judge, I look for opportunity. The way to find out is get a pad and pen and keep a record of it, but let me warn you, very often, uh, the front desk staff will not report accurately, and partly because they feel like if they highlight the number of patients that don't schedule, it's a negative reflection on them. You have to train them that we're looking for where we can improve, and it's, it's wonderful when you identify an area, even if it's your responsibility, where we can do a better job. I will tell you this, the number of patients calling your office and not scheduling, is bigger than you think. Some of you right now are sitting there going, oh, we don't have that problem. Well, we've done this with many clients over the years and they were shocked to find out the lost opportunity of some of those patients. Now, one thing that could begin to change that, it's not a 100% solution by any means, is how you structure the new patient phone call. If I were you and, and we didn't have this conversation tonight, but you thought of this, I would, close down the next two days and pardon that bell, I'm at home and that's my driveway alarm uh, that I forgot to unplug. So I would take the next two days and do nothing but work on the structure of my new patient phone call. Because whatever you, and I don't mean this literally, but whatever you'd lose in the next two days is a rounding error compared to the revenue and production gains you're going to have. So that new patient phone call is the first step of the ITC process, even though it's being handled by a front desk person. Now, what do we want to get into that phone call? We don't want to just be nice to the patient, which most of your front desk people are, get some information and get them scheduled. That's the typical new patient phone call. Not good enough. Not good enough for implants and not good enough in a five-star customer service business. So number one, we want to build value. 
you need to script the new patient phone call. And in that scripting, and maybe we'll do the script in another webinar, but in that, because it could take the whole webinar literally to go through it and explain it and dissect it, but there's something called benefit statements. Make sure you have four to five benefit statements about dental implants in that phone call. And the more customized, the better. If the patient tells you why they want implants and you respond with benefits that they will get for the reason that they want implants, you are beginning the sales process. And this is positive sales. This is good for the patient. Number two, relationship building. Try to build what I call a mini relationship with the patient. Uh, you know, I'm so fortunate for the consultants that I work with because I call them the brain trust. You know, very often when I'm doing research, I'll hold a meeting and get a lot of opinions from them. And they all agree that relationship building with the new patient will increase new patient production across the board. And then third, drive your brand message. Now, in order to do that, you have to know your brand. And we could spend a whole webinar on just branding, and maybe we'll do that sometime. But branding is really hard to understand. And because of that, uh, the way I explain branding is very simple. Your brand is what you want to be known for. You've got to figure out your brand and drive that brand to your customers. And your customers, I know I'm covering a lot tonight from a philosophical standpoint, but your main customers are not your patients. You're, they're your secondary customers. They get great clinical care, but your main customer is the referring doctors because there aren't many people on this webinar that don't have you know, 80, 90% of their referrals coming from referring doctors. I was talking to one of the surgeons we work with a couple weeks ago. Um, he uh, produced 3.5 million in 2020. Having said that, he was exhausted and doesn't want to do it again. He was truly exhausted uh, and, and, and cut his schedule back by two half days in 2021, and he's still doing great. But just to make the point, he's a very high-end producer, and he kept telling me how excited he was about the referrals he was getting from his online campaign. So I'm always curious. I'm always looking for the best ways to uh, do things so I can bring it to you, bring it to our clients. I love to educate. And I said to him along the way, by the way, what percentage of that three and a half million in 2020 came from your social media campaign? He said, oh, it's great. It's, it's up to 10%. So 10% of his referrals, which is great, came from social media. The other 90% literally came from referring doctors and maybe a smattering of patients who referred other patients. So keep in mind, your primary customer, bar none, is the referring doctor and keep your referral marketing program consistent. Now, that will bring in the patients, but on the phone, share your brand. Are you an implant practice? Are you a this an implant practice? Are you a high level practice? Are you, we take all insurance practice, nothing wrong with that. What, are you a great location? Have you been there for 40 years? Do you have, you know, five doctors with different emphasis areas, even though you all do everything? What is your brand? And here's a great example. Living Group has a mission statement. Your mission is not your brand. Your mission will never, ever change. So our mission, as an analogy or example, is improving the lives of dentists. I wrote that in 1985, and I guess I got it right because it hasn't changed. It shouldn't change, and I don't think it ever will change. That's not the brand. Brands change. Our brand is increasing practice production, but if we don't let the world know that, they don't automatically figure it out. If you don't let the world know your brand, starting in the first phone call, they will not automatically figure it out. So spend some time coming up with your one sentence brand statement. And you don't say, by the way, Mrs. Smith, our practice is, you work it in to the conversation while you're building value 
and a relationship. And then the front desk should, I know they're busy, but they should also take notes on anything they learn about that patient so that it can be reflected back by the doctor and treatment coordinator when the patient comes in. And relationships, I just want to make the statement that the longer I'm around, I, I didn't know this 35 years ago, 37 years ago, but I do today. Life is about relationships in your personal life, your business life. I can tell you that anyone who can build powerful relationships is going to be successful in any service business. You can put them anywhere, they're going to do well. Because in this fast paced, overwhelming society, online society, Amazon deliveries, Google runs our lives, it tells us everything we want to know. Facebook keeps us entertained. Apple makes great products for us to spend a lot of money and buy. And they are great products. The bottom line is relationships still count. And I warn dentists uh, not to be so beholden to technology that you lose what I call the human factor. The ITC job is not about technology. It's about relationships. And in that first phone call, the front desk staff needs scripting to promote the ITC. And by the way, Mrs. Smith, when you come in, you're gonna meet Sally, our implant treatment coordinator. She is very experienced, very caring, and everybody loves her. That's one of our scripts that we use. Now, that's the first phone call, and I could go into, you know, uh, literally I could spend an hour. Uh, and maybe we'll do this in one of the upcoming ones. I'll invite Angela Pickett, our VP of Consulting, to do a role play with me where we break it down. But I will tell you that there are probably about 30 to 40 components to that first phone call. It sounds really complicated, and maybe if you had never had a phone call in a dental office, it might be. But pretty quickly, once you learn those steps, so go write your scripts. After you've done it 10, 20, 30 times, you start to get smooth at it. I believe it takes about 100 times of something to get comfortable with it. And you know, by the 30th and 40th time, it's just flowing. Okay, so that's really important. And uh, now, the patient arrives in the practice. Our rule is they're out of the reception room within three minutes. Remember, it's not a doctor that they're seeing right away, it's the ITC. We want to control the entire new patient experience, hence the scripting, hence we take notes in the first phone call. Now they arrive, three minutes, they're with the ITC on their way to one of the appropriate rooms. And that's how long a patient should be in reception and the ITC takes over. And by the way, one of our concepts is they will never see anyone again other than the doctor until the day they have surgical treatment. So when you get them out within three minutes, it shows you're on time, it says you care, it shows efficiency. And uh, Jim Collins, who wrote the book, the best selling books, Built to Last, Good to Great, great by choice and how the mighty fall, tells the story uh, that when people come to his management laboratory in Boulder, Colorado, which is probably well over $100,000 a day now, and these are, these are top executives like Jeff Bezos or the or Fortune 500 CEOs and their teams. They fly in on the private jets. Uh, he does not meet them for dinner the night before for other reasons. And at 8 a.m., and he's got an atomic clock in his office, at 8 a.m. exactly, not 8 a.m. in 12 seconds, but at 8 a.m., the door opens, he walks in, and the meeting begins. And he says the reason he, the first time a couple of times I heard that from Jim, I thought, well, that seems kind of cold or pompous or whatever, but I've really come to his way of thinking, which is, he says, if I walk in exactly at the moment I told them we're starting, it shows them I take their time seriously. And these are people that can buy anything in the world they want except for one thing, they can't buy more time. So show those patients that you care. Okay, oh, I keep doing that, sorry guys. Okay, now, what is, where do you have an ITC consult? I'm asked this question all the time. Personally, I like a consult dedicated room with a dental chair. 
the, the exam for implants is really simple. I mean, you're looking for missing teeth. It's pretty simple. You may need to go take some radiographs and you know a scan or whatever, of course. But the bottom line is you want a very comfortable room that looks a little less like a dental treatment room, even though there's a dental chair. Make them comfortable. And then if, if you're going to see them in a treatment room, once you're done with whatever you're doing, I would move them to a consult room. Although again, I like one room, comfortable, relaxing, and a, an exam chair so you can take a look. Now, how long is the ITC appointment? Well, I've already told you, it's 60 minutes. And what's great about going from the doctor doing this to the ITC is not only that your production will go up 20 or 30%, and by the way, every one of you on this call has a 30 to 50% potential growth in your production and their ways to manage it comfortably. But what I love about the ITC is she's not in a hurry. She has time to talk to the patients. She has time to be caring and nurturing. And a lot of patients want that. Although I will tell you the quick story about a, uh, a, a man who came in for implant consults to one of our consult to one of our clients he ran two of the biggest investment funds for one of the biggest investment companies in America. And this was not in Manhattan, uh, oddly enough, even though their headquarters are there. And he walked in and the ITC started talking. He said, let, let me interrupt you. I'm doing this. Just tell me how much it's going to cost. It was the, she said it was the fastest ITC appointment she ever had. The general dentist had called to tell them what it was, what the case was. All he, it was done. And, and when someone like that says, I'm doing this, they mean I'm doing this. And she was smart enough not to force him to sit through her entire process. And, it, and he was a nice guy, she said. It wasn't that he was uh, arrogant or obnoxious. He just was done. How much is it? I'm doing it. Uh, he had made his decision. So we want a 60-minute appointment normally. Uh, it can be shorter for a smaller case. You might not need all 60 minutes for a single tooth implant. But their patients, they're patients for bigger cases that want less time, patients for smaller cases that want to talk. And when they come in, I'm sorry, and on the phone call, the first call, the front desk should ask questions. We call them qualifying questions to give the ITC an idea. Who are you meeting and what do we know about this person? Now, the relationship formula is very simple. People who like you trust you. People who trust you buy from you. Like to trust to buy. People who like you trust you. People who trust you buy from you. The ITC, if I was going to say one thing tonight over anything else, the ITC needs to make the patients their friends. If they can do that, you're done, you got it, and you're going to be incredibly successful. At that point, it just comes down to can they afford it or do you have an option for them? Uh, okay, so now, how do we start the ITC appointment? I call it the opening playbook. Let's talk about an NFL National Football League team. These are people who are playing for big, big stakes. These are elite athletes, the best in the world, the best coaches in the world. These people operate at a level that we, don't, we can't imagine from a sports standpoint. And yet every team does the same thing. They have their week, they have their practice, the coaches work on the playbook. You see them out there with their multicolored sheets and the quarterback has a uh, uh, armband with different plays on it. And here's what they know. They know the first time they go on offense, what their opening plays will be. They know the first play, the second, maybe the third, maybe the whole first series as it's called. And then it all goes to hell in a handbasket. Because after that first series, they get to see what the other team is doing from a defense standpoint. And when they see that, all of a sudden, they have to shift and change and modify. You can't lay out a whole game plan. They call it a game plan, but you can't do it because you don't know what you're going to be up against. The other team at halftime, many times the team shifts its defense or how they play, and you have to be ready to shift as well. That's no different, it's a good analogy, I hope, I hope it's a good, I like it, I hope you like it, to the opening playbook for the ITC. 
because the first thing she does after greeting the patient and escorting them to a consult room is called the golden ten. And she learns how to interview in a friendly way to learn 10, 10 personal things about that patient. Because when you learn 10 personal things about that patient, what happens? What happens is you move from professional relationship to personal relationship, somewhere around personal item eight, nine, and 10. And when you ask people about themselves, they start to like you. Then she compliments the referring doctor. They like their referring doctor. How do we know that? They, t they trusted that doctor enough to come to you. Now you're thinking once in a while, patient comes in and says, I'm not going back there. That happens, okay. That's a whole nother complicated issue. But for the most part, they like their referring doctor and they will go back and tell that doctor that you said something nice, the ITC and the surgeon, the periodontist, prosthodontist, whoever, whatever your specialty is, they will go back and say positive things about you. So your first series of questions is the NFL team playbook. Now, with the opening playbook, we have scripting. And the next thing we do is we start explaining the benefits of dental implants in general. And there are no more than three or four or five at the most. We don't overwhelm them. We're not doing a hard sales pitch. We're, I really like to think about this as a conversation, a positive conversation between the ITC and the patient where everybody's gonna win because that's, that's the only way to operate uh, in a dental practice of any kind. Everybody has to win. So we explain the benefits of dental implants and then uh, the patient might start talking and we're asking them with our questions about their situation, why they want implants, and we encourage them to talk. When people talk, they're getting themselves comfortable and confident. Let me say that again. You may have never heard that before. When people are talking, they're getting themselves comfortable and confident. So we might say things to prompt them like, tell me more or how much do you know about dental implants? But in a positive way, not to demean them or make them feel inferior for not knowing. Be careful with that, because eventually even ITCs can get robotic if they don't keep uh, reinvigorating themselves. Do you know anyone who has implants? And then you should have great stories for different types of cases, the single tooth, the full mouth, the denture, the uh, crown and bridge. You need stories because here's how people learn. I heard a statement once in a philosophy course that really helped shape a lot of my life. People can only learn by comparison. People can only learn by comparison. That is the only way we learn things. So stories are how we give comparisons to these patients and these are stories with great endings so that they continue to get the confidence that I'm gonna get implants, I'm gonna get a great result, I'm gonna change my life. They wanna know if they work, how long they last. We need to be ready to answer those questions and we have great answers. Now, from a foundational standpoint, if you build a great relationship, the case is gonna close other than money. And in terms of money, you need financial options with care credit uh, or patient financing. Their care credit's the largest uh, one out there. Um, you need patient financing available and tell, I suggest you tell patients at the beginning that, that you know, when I, after I explain this to you, we have several financial options, including patient financing. Let them know that up front because that, that gives them the confidence to think, oh, you know what? Maybe I can afford this because implants are expensive and as well as a lot of people are doing right now, which is gonna change gradually, it's still a lot of money. They need to feel like they can afford it. And great relationships make the patient even more satisfied with your treatment. Okay, so what are the steps of the ITC console? We started with the golden 10, where we're building a friendship, where we're learning about what they know about implants, why they're interested, what we need to fill in for them. And then step two is to give them an overview of dental implants themselves. There's a clinical piece, then we talk about benefits, and these need to be scripted. The clinical piece is scripted, the benefit statements are scripted, we talk about success rates, how long they last, 
and then everybody wants to know what's the recovery period from implants. Well, the way I like to break it down is in five buckets. The first bucket is the clinical information. Spend about 10% of your time on that. The big mistake, especially doctors, is we spend lots of time on that. And we, the patients get confused, they're not following you. They don't care. They don't care what implants are made out of. They want to know the number two bullet benefits. What will those implants do for me? And we encourage you, to the ITC, to spend about 60% of time on the benefits of implant dentistry. That's what people are buying. Then how long will it take? Okay, 10% uh, of your time there. How much will it hurt? They, they're, they, these are smart people. You're gonna put a cylinder in their bone. So how much is this gonna hurt? Don't shy away from it. Be proactive about it. The good news is implant cases are a lot less painful than most people think. And then lastly, how much will it cost? Or my statement, if we had 16 hours together and I was teaching you the entire case presentation methodology from Living Group, the last part says, in the end, it always comes down to money. Except for the very wealthy, it comes down to how much is it? For some people, $3,000 is a lot of money. For some people, $30,000 is a lot of money. For some people, 60 to 90,000. But it's interesting in America that people can generally find the money if they really want something. The average car in America is now $37,000, not 25 or 15. Now uh, you can find $25,000 cars and even $15,000 cars, but the average car, new car, is 37, was 37,000 before the pandemic. I don't even know what it is today. Okay, so step three, take any records that you need, uh, explain what you're doing, get those done, and then step four, in comes the doctor, usually at around 30 minutes into the 60 minute, minute by minute, script by script appointment. So we come in as a doctor and you should spend a minute or two with your ITC outside. She excuses herself for a moment. She gives you a quick briefing about the patient, including a couple of personal items. Why is the patient here? What's the interest? What type of case might we be looking at? In comes the doctor, and we start with conversation. It's called the two-minute drill. In two minutes, you can actually have a short conversation with the patient and build your own relationship. And relationships are important, including telling them you are going to take care of them start to finish. People want that concept. Take care of me. What I'm about to say might not make sense to you, but in a research study by the Ritz-Carlton hotel chain, which is the finest customer service hotel chain or one of them on the planet, they found that what these affluent guests really want, and this is the part that might not make sense, but I'm not kidding, this is a real research study, treat me like you're my mother. When you were a kid, you you got home, your mother was there. You were hungry, your mother made you something to eat. You had a problem, your mother took care of you. Well, the guests at the Ritz-Carlton want all those things from the Ritz-Carlton. My extrapolation is your patients want to know, this is surgery, this is something going in my bone, this is expensive, treat me like my mother. If you tell me you'll take care of me, I'm much more likely to do this. You do your doctor exam, you propose the treatment options for the patient, you answer questions. Objections are nothing more than questions. When pa Nobody objects if they're not interested. So if a patient's objecting to something you said, they're trying to get comfortable to do the case. And then we don't want doctors giving the fees. We want the ITC, after the doctor leaves, to sit down and work through the fees and financial options comfortably, slowly, and conveniently. Okay, then step five, it's amazing. The doctor leaves, and then the patient has a lot more questions. Uh, they think of them, they don't wanna ask the doctor, they're intimidated by a doctor. So the ITC should have a list of FAQs, frequently asked questions, 
that she will be prepared to answer because 95% of the questions, and that's a made up number, but somewhere around that are gonna be exactly the same. Then what we like is the patient does not, does not go back to the front desk. You, the ITC, remember I said this, is the only person they deal with besides the doctor until the day of treatment. So the ITC uh, should have computer access in the consult room, make the appointment for the patient, work out the financial options, produce any paperwork. This patient does not go back to the front desk because if they do, they start asking the front desk questions. The front desk people are not necessarily focused or trained to deal with that and you can lose cases. Step six is follow-up. This is a new body of work that we're doing a lot with at Levin Group. I now believe that follow-up is just as important as closing the case in the office. You're gonna have as many people saying, I'm gonna do this, but let me check with my husband or wife, let me check my work schedule, let me check my bank account, let me check my vacation schedule, let me go home and think about where am I gonna spend my money, a new outfit, uh, a new car or implants. And right now, there's a lot of money floating around. It's gonna tighten back up as people start spending more on restaurants, entertainment, and travel. And we're gonna to have to get better than we've been in the last year or so in terms of building value. So follow-up is now critical. The ITC will follow up with these patients. Um, if there's a spouse, you can invite them to come in with a spouse or to have an evening phone conference. When you have an evening phone conference with a patient who wants implants and their spouse, you almost always close it. Now, you've got to work evenings to do that. That's a decision you have to make, but you almost always close it. If the patient has any challenges, the ITC should help them through that answer new questions when you contact them that may have come up and you follow up not once but multiple times because many of these patients are going to say yes the second or third time you're not chasing them or harassing them you're being a good partner and liaison based on the relationship that you built and then do everything you can to make it easy for this patient to say yes convenient scheduling financial options answering questions taking them through the process. So in summary uh, of our webinar this evening, and I sincerely hope I've given you some very positive things to think about, have a great and value-based first phone call. Train that front desk group to do this exceptionally well and measure how many patients call, be invisible, and do not schedule an appointment. Number two, give the patient a very timely and enthusiastic welcome. They're out of that reception room within three minutes with the, escorted by the ITC. Design a minute, 60 minute, minute by minute, script by script console appointment. Focus it heavily on the benefits, 60% of the conversation, and build a deep relationship. So I hope this gives you some really good ideas. Uh, I'll, I'm going to make a note down the road. I'll do another webinar with Toman Medical where we'll do the scripting of the first new patient phone call. And I'm going to I'll bring it as a role play, uh, which is a little more fun. But at the same time, we'll break it down. Angela Pickett is is one of the leading experts on scripting uh, in in the entire dental profession. So we're fortunate, and I'll invite her. I'm sure she'll accept. Um, and additional resources. If you do not get our tip of the day, everything's free, uh, go to our website, levingroup.com. There's a pop-up box, sign up for, under your specialty. Uh, you can join 30 some thousand other dental professionals getting our tip uh, every day, Monday through Friday. And then uh, not necessarily, uh, it's not necessarily specialties or implants, but if you would like to just get more of a sense of practice management, uh, we do have a YouTube channel you can subscribe to. So I hope you all have enjoyed this. Um, uh, yeah, by the way, feel free to email me at rlevin, L-E-V-I-N, rlevin at levingroup.com if you have topics you want me to cover with Toman Medical in the future. Again, I want to thank Toman Medical for making this possible because my part of my personal mission is education. And uh, I, I really, really hope you got four or five or six pearls to take back and work with your uh, ITC, or if you're an ITC, 
you always want to be improving. That's the excitement of life. And uh, maybe I gave you a few things to work on uh, tonight as well. And by the way, it just takes practice and you'll get great at it. Um, uh, Steve, who's handling questions tonight? Is that you? Yeah, it, hi, it, I'm back. Yes, it is. And uh, assuming you can hear me okay, yes? Perfectly, thank you. Good, great, thanks. And just to remind everybody, uh, there's a little question box over on the right-hand side of your of your GoToWebinar panel. If you're on a PC, um, if you're on a phone, you have to push the little hamburger menu to pull it down, um, the little three horizontal lines. Uh, but please submit your questions there. I do have one to get to get us started. Um, one that's here. I'm having a tough time finding staff right now. We've heard that before. Which time of which type of team member is best suited to act as an ITC if I need to add this to someone's job who currently works at the practice? Okay, so the first uh, part of the question, which was not a question, uh, and I know I understand that, is staffing issues, uh, which we're not going to talk about tonight. It is a crisis level in dentistry, and um, we could spend you know three more hours on that. So the real question was, which type of team member will make a good ITC? Um, you know, I think questions are so important. Uh, for those of you who know me, you know that I'm all about the questions, and I believe that great questions get great answers. If you go right to the answer, you often veer off in the wrong direction. So I'm actually going to take that question, Steve, and change it a little bit because I think it's a dangerous question. Not, I'm not being critical, it's a, it's a good question because I can call it a dangerous question. And what I mean by that is there's no one type of team member that makes a good ITC. Should it, be a de should it be a surgical assistant because they know surgery? Should it be a front desk person because they're relationship people? Should it be a, an RN? Should it be an office manager? And I think none of the above. I think it's much more about the job description. Does this person fit the job description? Personally, I want the most positive, friendly, upbeat, energized. I want a person that I meet that energizes me. They're people that you meet. You just love to talk to them. You love meeting them. They couldn't be more friendly. They couldn't be nicer. And, uh, and basically, when that happens, you like them. And this is a job. It's not a hard job. It's a job you have to master, but it's not a hard job. You're not going to have, you're not negotiating. You've, you've only got so many financial options. You've got only got so many implant options. You, you know, you, 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 there's, they may say, well, I want to do the case this way. You can't do that. So it's a job that can really be mastered. It's more important to get the right personality. And if you, if your ITC is not a person that's quick, immediately likable, really cares. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some writing right now, Steve, on the concept of really caring. Do you really care about your patients? Uh, for specialists, do you really care about your referring doctors? Now, everybody says, oh, yes, of course I care. You're supposed to care. I, I would look really bad if I don't care. But I think the longer you're in practice, the less you care. It's not that you don't care. You're just not as focused on Caring. If, if I could wave a wand, I'd have everyone wake up tomorrow morning with incredible caring for referring doctors and for patients, uh, the kind that we had in our early days. And I'm not being critical. This is human nature. But we need to bring that back. I often remind myself how fortunate I am that we have clients at Levin Group uh, and, that we, and we need to take amazing care of them because we care. And, and you always want to keep on top of that and reminding that. So you want an ITC that cares and is immediately likable. And I think that's the real question. Does this person care and are they immediately likable? So that's my long answer to a, a good but dangerous question. I'm gonna add a little bit more to it because one of the doctors just um, sent in and I'll bump this one up a little bit because it's, it's tied to your answer. Do you think a hygienist could be fit, could be a fit for the position? Oh, certainly. Uh, I think a hygienist, an assistant, um, a front desk person. Uh, I, this is the one job that you could teach to a waitress that you meet who's got a great personality, uh, other than, you know, she'd have to get radiology certified if you want her to do that. Uh, you know, if you meet a person who doesn't know dental, it doesn't, it, 
in one day you can train them. We can, I mean, we've done it. You can train them in the ITC process. The, so could a hygienist do the job? Absolutely. And many hygienists are incredibly personable people. The only downside uh, is hygienists are highly compensated team members. And by the way, there's a huge shortage of them right now, which doesn't mean you might not find a hygienist that would like the position if you can compensate them at the right level uh, based on your overhead structure. You know, my mind always goes back to the overall financial structure of practices as well. But yes, a hygienist could be terrific. I've met many hygienists that would be superior, but it's not their hygiene background, although talking about that is, is very inspiring as much as their personality. Uh, you got one here for you, and you may have touched on it, I'm not sure, but somebody's wondering who should present the fee, the TC or the doctor? I generally like, in this case, the TC. Now, if you all hear me in different environments, because we work with general dentists in five different specialties, for general dentists presenting a case, forget implants for a minute, but presenting a case, I'm okay with the GP. I'm using this as an analogy. I'm okay with the GP presenting the total case fee, but not discussing financial options because that gets into a negotiation. And if a patient says to the doctor, well, can you do this payment plan? And you say no, they know you can do it. And you simply said no, which is a negative, often a bad result. But with implants, I really like the ITC to be a professional. And she should be able to calculate with the doctor the cost of the case and then work through the financial options, all of which, again, take place in the consult room. They don't go up to the front desk to work out the money and get a check and how they're going to pay. That all takes place in the consult room. The ITC controls that relationship until the day of treatment. And I think that's the third time I said that tonight. Perfect. And we have just a minute or two here, and I have, one, so I have time for one more to squeeze in. If a patient asks a technical question when I'm not in the room, what's the way to handle that? Oh, well, first of all, eventually the ITC will be able to answer a lot of those questions because, again, most of those questions are going to be repeated over time. But it's a very simple, there's nothing wrong with, you know, they know the ITC is not a doctor. There is nothing wrong with saying, and here's exactly what I would say. Mrs. Jones, use a patient's name in every conversation. They love their names. This is how we build scripts at Living Group. Mrs. Jones, that is a great question. Compliment the question. And I'm going to have Dr. Smith answer that for you. I mean, what, what's better than the doctor is going to answer it? You know, and I've never heard of a patient responding negatively to that. If you fake it, if you try to fake it and they pick up on it, then you're done. You know, you, you'll lose that case. So we're big believers at Living Group in honesty and transparency. You just have to say it the right way. Great question. Thank you. That's perfect. And I, uh, so we're right at the 8.30. And, and Scott, welcome back. It's good to see you again. Thank you, Steve and, and Roger. Just once again, thank you for just a wonderful webinar. As always, you give tremendous pearls and an awful lot to think about. And I think if everyone takes this and follows this, uh, you've given such a roadmap for success with the implant treatment coordinator consult and how this person can really help uh, build an implant practice. So thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Good night, everybody, and good luck. Have a great summer. Thanks, gang.